Before we do that, though, we are going to take a look at the Cave of Flames, though, because there is something we can do here now. And yeah, once again, this is another one of those weird downward cave levels. Okay, we are kind of going in the right way, I guess. Oh, look, a bomb. <laughs> guess sometime in the future we're going to get something to explode that bomb. Because that's just the way this game works, I suppose. Okay, well, there's the chest. There's the fire. <laughs> Okay, please tell me I can make it back. Please tell me. Ah. I believe I do have to get through here, though, so let me go back. This is where this can get kind of annoying. Okay, there we go. Eh, maybe that wasn't so bad. Okay, here's... This is a weird part right here, I feel like. Because if you go through this with an enemy, you'll lose the enemy. But if you throw through, like... You can do that. I just don't see the point of this. Like, why, why even have that? That, like, doesn't really do much to the actual solution of that puzzle. It's just an extra inconvenience. That's really all it is. I don't know. Sometimes it just bothers me, the, the silly things game developers do. Or I'm not saying they need to make the games easier by any means, but when they do, like, try to make something challenging, they just kind of, like, add random things. And, like, I don't really get that. It just seems like a very weird thing to do to extend gameplay. Okay, well, there you go. What are we going to get now? We're going to get... A wand! You love a good wand. And this will actually unlock something, too. What will this unlock? Uh, big bridge? Uh, frigid sea. And sea turtles again. Okay. So we have... Actually, we have five levels we can go to right now. <laughs> so yeah, this is really... This is where, like, again, it just really starts to get to the point where... You really have to keep track by, like, what I'm doing by writing them down. Because otherwise, you're just gonna not really know where to go next. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Bank of the Wild River. We have to go back here again. And... I believe this is where we're actually going to be getting the blue treasure chest as opposed to the green treasure chest. So I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. And again, this is where I just, I don't know, game design gets a little weird, I guess. So with Vampire Warrior, you can destroy those frog enemies. Which, funny story about the frog enemies, I guess. Uh, there's this Twitch channel called SaltyBet. You can see it at just, like, SaltyBet.com. Where SaltyBet's basically just, like, an online watchable uh, Mugen, the Mugen fighting engine. Where you can just, like, watch computer-controlled AIs fight each other. People can add characters to the roster. Uh, it'll randomize the characters. Sometimes they have tournaments and stuff like that. It, it, it's something just very, very silly. It's a very silly thing. Mainly silly in the type of characters you can see on there. The frog from Wario Land, the frog we just destroyed not too long ago, is actually a fighter <laughs> in Salty Bed. Like, I remember seeing it uh, when I was watching it once. And it's just, it was really weird because, like, I was watching it with my friends not too long ago. And then that frog actually showed up. 
And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm starting to let's play a game that has that frog in it. How is that, how is, how is this actually happening? And yeah, that's pretty much just what happened, which was, again, kind of a funny story, because again, I'm let's playing this game, and then that frog actually freaking appeared, for crying out loud. It's just silly. Oh, di oh! You know, I had a feeling that would actually happen, too, if I hit the water, so... I guess it's kind of my fault for letting that happen. But yeah, it was funny. It was also funny because it was a team battle that featured that frog and a fighter that looked like Ronald McDonald, but it wasn't Ronald McDonald. It was called Donald. So, and, and the frog's name, I guess, is Rump or something. So it was team Donald Rump versus this female fighter named Carla and Marx from the Kirby series. So it was Donald Rump versus... Um, Carla Marx, <laughs> which again was just kind of silly, but I mean that's salty bet for you, I guess. Okay, so we got that level done. Next, we're gonna go to we can go to sea turtles, right? Yeah, we can. Okay, back to sea turtles. So I guess uh, that wand actually got rid of some of the black water. So because it did that, I can actually explore this level. A little more which is nice so we can actually see more stuff but yeah salty bed is definitely uh, it's something it's not really one of those things that I watch like often but sometimes when my friends are watching I turn it on and we just laugh at some of the ridiculous things that happen in it I guess I'm sure there's been people who've heard of it before, so... It does feel weird trying to introduce that to people now who have no idea, like, what it even is. It's like, yeah, people actually watch this. People actually devote their lives to watching this kind of stuff. But I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, Twitch Plays Pokemon, stuff of that nature. Sometimes, like, just on the internet, like, new things will trend. And people will figure out, like, the next innovative thing that they can put on, like, Twitch or YouTube or whatever. That's one of the great things I like about the internet, because literally, like, you can do anything. Like, the world's at your oyster, pretty much. And anything can become a thing. Anything can be popular or... I don't know, maybe popular is not the right word, but viral, I guess. Ah, stupid motorcycle again, my god. Ugh, motorcycles, I hate them so much. But like a hell, I, I mean, even my channel, I never thought, like, if you told me, like, years ago that I'd get, uh... I'd make a name for myself playing video games on the internet. Like, if you told that to my five-year-old self, like, he wouldn't have believed you for, like, one second. So, I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting how things can develop, I guess. Okay, let's play some golf. Haven't got that par three in a while, but, you know, maybe it's good that we haven't. I can actually try to beat these on my own merits. Oh, wow, I'm actually surprised I managed that. And see, that's going to actually be pretty good, because I'm going to have a lot of extra strokes here. Uh, i got to be careful, though. I can't hit this too hard. There we go. And I think I can just hit full power here, and I'll be fine. Oh, that was close, though. So this is for Birdie, I believe. Ah, oh, please hit this. Please hit this. Thank God. I would have hated to have to redo that when I actually dodged the water. Because I think, I think we had that hole earlier. And I actually hit it in the water. But I still managed to make par with it at least. 
Okay, I think all I have to do is just go back up here now that the minigame block's gone. The red block always has to seems to do with minigames. Like, minigames are usually involved with the red key. Not always, but it seems like most often or not it's involved in some way. Okay, it's down here. Okay. Okay, we got sea turtles done. I think we're going to the pool next, the pool of rain. Either the pool of rain or the bridge, whatever comes first. And we got another eyeball. Why? Because eyeballs are eyeballs. I mean, I'm not wrong, but <laughs> whatever. Let's keep moving. Okay, so Pool of Rain. This is actually the fourth time we're coming here. But we cannot get all the coins. I'll show you the reason why we can't get all the coins. Because I have to go over here anyway. And this is really, really stupid. This is the reason why we can't get the coins. Because we need an ability that will allow us to swim through those currents. Which we do not have. So, because of that, we cannot get all the coins on this run. I think if the game actually allowed you to get all the coins in the fourth run, I would respect this game a lot more. But because... Uh, you don't have that option. That's just something that really, really bugs me. Because you have to play through these levels more than you'd think you'd have to. And like, I don't know, there's just something... I just have a problem with that. I really, really do. I mean, I really... I'm not really one to try to make a big deal about certain things, but... I, I don't know. And I, I was talking to one of my friends about this uh, the other day. But when it comes to like game design and game programming uh, because I went to college for uh, computer science and uh, software engineering like those are stuff that like when it comes to like little game design quirks that stuff actually bothers me a lot more because I have like a degree in software engineering oh my god the stupid puffy warrior thing uh, but yeah, like, whenever I, like, play a game, I notice, like, how games could actually be developed better. And, like, okay, why do they do it this way when they could have done it this other way? Like, stuff like that, I guess. And because I notice that a lot more in video games, because I have experience with that kind of stuff now, it bothers me a lot more when there's stuff like that. Because it's like, well, why... Th the game could have been, like, a lot probably a lot better if it didn't have that little quirk. So I don't know. That's just something I've kind of come to the conclusion of, I guess. And we get another crayon. Hooray for crayons. <clears throat> so yeah, if you ever go into game design or game development, software engineering, any of those majors, uh, be prepared to be way more critical of games, because uh, that's just something that'll happen. Definitely has happened to me a lot more. And like, I don't want to be a reviewer. I'm not a game reviewer. I don't want to be a reviewer. I want to be a game developer or game designer, but uh, as far as reviewers, like, I don't want to be one, but because of my college training... There's just a lot of things I notice now, I guess. Okay, so we're back at the big bridge. This is another case where, uh, yep, this is the last treasure. But, once again, we can't actually get all the coins because of some stupid feature. And I'll get into that right now. Okay, well, let me make it through here first, though. Okay, these creatures right here. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to ground pound, which will allow them to fall down, and then you can jump on them. The only problem is, uh, we do not have the most powerful ground pound yet, so we cannot actually get them to do that. Because there's a coin up there. I don't think there's any other way to get that coin. 
But see, it's like, the coin's right there. That's the only coin we have a problem with. Why can't they just allow us to get the coin so we can get all the coins and finish this level and just be done with it? It's just really, really needless backtracking at this rate. And that's, again, that's the kind of stuff that just really bothers me now because I took so many classes on, like, advanced programming, software engineering, and that kind of stuff. Because so much of that is trying to develop a program that meets the needs of your consumers. And, uh, given you don't know how consumers are going to react to a new game until they actually play the game, but still, like, I mean, I feel like that's something that'd be in my mind as I'm making the game, is like, okay, could there be a way to improve that? Can I make this better so people can actually enjoy this more? Also, I feel like I did this wrong. I may have skipped a step or two. We'll see. I think I had to destroy more. Yeah, I did. Ah! Oh, okay. That's right. That's right. Okay. Pop this. If only I could crouch jump into that hole. That'd be nice, but now I have to go through here again. Okay, we are good. We are good to finish this level. Hi, coin. I imagine you just, like, pound this, or you pound somewhere to get that coin. I'm just going to go ahead and finish, though. Okay, so that is a lantern, it looks like. I think it's a lantern. It looked like one. We are done with the bridge, and the only level we have left now is the Frigid Sea. So let us go in here and let's kick some ass, guys. Oh my god. Can I just... There we go. You know, I hate getting rid of bears, because I like bears, but these ones need to go. They need to leave me alone. They need to leave me alone as I do my thing. Okay, well, there's the green treasure chest. We're in the right area. There's the key. We can't get the key, so let's do some investigation, shall we? Okay. Ugh. Get away from you. Hit the switch. And look, the water's frozen now. Which will allow us to grab the key, but now we have to unfreeze the water. And not fall down here. Oh my god. I thought I jumped on that guy. Okay, shoot. Ah. Again, if, it wouldn't be so bad if I didn't feel like Wario's platforming was so stiff in this game compared to the other games. Because then I'd feel more confident about actually making some jumps. Okay, what do we got? We got... Ooh, a light. Maybe I combine the light with the lantern. Yeah, I think that's exactly what we do. Awesome. This will allow us access to a new level. 
a castle that just appears out of nowhere called the Castle of Illusions. The Castle of Illusions starring Mickey Mouse. <coughs> oh, excuse me. My throat's actually getting kind of dry. Which is a shame, because I'm only about, like, halfway through this recording session. Maybe not even that much. Okay, so I believe this is how I get... Okay, yeah, that's how I get that treasure chest. But, I don't need to worry about that yet, because I need to get the key first anyway. Oh my god, this guy needs to go away. Okay, so, we need to climb up here. Being careful of zombies on the way up. These are levels where zombies can just be really, really freaking annoying. Because you have to go through so much of this level just being careful and watching what you do. And those zombies can just really, really mess it up for you. Thankfully, I know where to expect the zombies because of my practice file. But that's not really an advantage that other people will have. Also, yeah, you can find the treasure chest very easily. Because the red treasure chest was in that last room. We saw where the gray treasure chest is, and I believe the next door will have the blue treasure chest. But you do have to kind of go like through all these rooms anyway to even make it up here to even get the keys. So like over here, we have the blue treasure chest. <clears throat> but, we need to press on anyway. Okay. Be careful of these zombies. These zombies are bad, bad news. Just be very, very patient right here. That's all I can... That's only the... The only... Oh, come on. I might be okay, though. I might be okay. I'm not okay... Because... Oh, come on! Well, thankfully I don't have to redo the entire room again. But still, that's very, very annoying. So yeah, like if you fall, you have to redo parts of this again. Hitting all the switches and stuff of that nature. Which is just really, really stupid. Oh, I was really hoping I could grab that key. But no, you have to be non-zombified the whole way. Oh my god, I fell all the way through here. Uh, and because of that... Yep, gotta do it again. Hold on, guys. Okay, so yeah, I think I just hate any levels that have zombies and they use zombies like this. Where it's quite literally you're climbing up an entire level and have to avoid zombies for pretty much the entire way. It's just really, really tedious. Okay, I think we're good. Yep, we're good. Okay. Well, that's that level. So yeah, I think this level alongside the uh, Tower of Revival... I just really hate these levels. They're not good. They're annoying. I don't like playing them. Zombie Wario is just a giant pain in the ass. Okay, what do we get this time? Ooh, we have another power-up, and I think this is actually the butt stomp. The power-up butt stomp. And I am very, very okay with that, too. Okay, so yeah, with the butt stomp, you can crash th through things more easily. It can also cause earthquakes that'll have enemies do some different things. Okay, so I said sea turtles, west crater, desert ruins. Oh, shoot, was there another one? Okay, hold on, let me check this. I guess a good time to, uh, I guess, show this feature off 
is that if you do mess up like I did right there, like you said, I said before, you can use this to watch the video again and see where exactly you need to go. So we have Sea Turtle Rocks, West Crater, have that. Desert Ruins, have that. Peaceful Village, have that. I put Peaceful Town, but I think that kind of goes without saying. Okay, we're good. We can uh, go back now.